Right. Uh, okay. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, my video is okay. Uh, if this is a bit high, right? Since you cannot know, uh, have another device. Okay, so I just need to rely on this. Uh, is everything okay? Can you hear me? Uh, Okay, so thanks uh, for the uh, indication. All right, so uh, for today, uh, I think uh, what I want to share uh, at the beginning is on uh, the teaching evaluation uh, process or the yeah, exercise. Okay. Um, okay. So um, for as you already uh, Okay, so we have this uh, kind of uh, teaching evaluation exercise. Uh, it's not just for the lecture, but also uh, for the lab or tutorials. Okay, uh, why this is so important uh, to not just for you, but also for uh, the organization itself. Okay, so uh, basically, it's because that uh, we need to have feedback. Okay, so a continuous feedback will be a very good uh, flow for uh, for our organization. So uh, we really uh, we really care or we really uh, need your feedback so that we can do this continuous uh, evaluation or continuous uh, improvement. Okay, so uh, as you may already know that this process will be until 11 February 2024 where you can either uh, log in directly through online and review the video and where or you can also go to click okay? uh, and uh, the important thing is that if they wanted to count or the organization want to count, either is uh, valid or uh, invalid, okay? it will be based on the numbers of students and the percentage. Okay? So if, uh, if we uh, have classes that less than 99%, uh, percent, okay? so 50% would be uh, need to be achieved. Okay? So if you have 100 students, uh, or above, okay, so you need to achieve 30%. Okay, uh, and uh, for my lecture is that, okay, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, that already done uh, the teaching evaluation. I hope that you give a very uh, sincere remark. Okay, uh, I, it's not that I wanted to have a good uh, evaluation, but uh, we need to have this kind of uh, process so that we are able to improve with really improve. Okay? Uh, and on your part, basically, it will uh, give you an exercise how you can uh, actually write a proper uh, uh, feedback. Lah. Okay. So it's a kind of exercise for both you and me, right? So uh, for lecture, Alhamdulillah, uh, because we need 30%, uh, thank you to the 59 out of the 130 students that I have uh, in this lecture session. Uh, so it's already valid. Uh, but uh, what would be the outcome? I, I cannot see it right now. Lah. Okay? I cannot see any comment at this moment unless you give me direct feedback. Then I can uh, uh, or I can uh, process it right now. Lah. But now uh, I can only see the percentage. Okay? And for the lecture, we already have 45.38. Okay? So we still welcome uh, more uh, feedback uh, from the rest of you. Okay? Uh, whereas for the lab or tutorial, okay? Uh, only TC five L that already achieved fifty percent. Okay, uh, so uh, the rest is still undergoing. Okay, uh, close. Okay, this TC seven L and TC eight L, also TC nine L is already forty five percent and above, and TC six L is thirty eight. Okay, so I would really uh, need your help to uh, get this feedback on so that uh, it can become a valid. Uh, condition or valid process uh, for the organization. Okay. So, uh, again, thank you, and I will need uh, you guys to still uh, get the feedback on uh, as soon as possible like before 11 of February. Okay. Right. Um, uh, supposedly, I, <laughs> I need to uh, cover uh, lecture 11, uh, 10. But I think I didn't uh, really look up 
properly but uh, and I have already prepared for the transport layer. Okay? So meaning that for next week, uh, we come back to uh, lecture 10. Okay? Uh, and with respect to the quiz which uh, we're supposed to have next week. Right? Okay? Another quiz, last quiz. Okay? Uh, out of the, uh, the rest, uh, uh, out of four, okay? uh, next week we'll have one more quiz which is online. Uh, which uh, the, the weightage is only 2.5 lah, tak banyak lah. Uh, but it still count lah. Okay, so uh, uh, it, the, the lecture cover will be anything until this lecture lah from uh, uh, the week, the last uh, chapter, okay, uh, which is I think is chapter 2, 7 eh. Okay, 7 then we jump to chapter 13, right? Okay, so 13 will be covered and also uh, for today's session lah. Yes, so they, uh, it will cover that uh, uh, lecture, uh, but I will announce that uh, later on through MML, uh, no, uh, through Google uh, uh, Classroom. Okay, uh, and for the assignment, I'm not so sure either Dr. Nabinadin have already uploaded, uh, 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 already uploaded the assignment or not, uh, but what I've checked and what I've been informed that he still needs some time uh, to get it up. Okay. Uh, and by last uh, yesterday, uh, I I don't see the assignment yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, I think uh, you should uh, please be uh, patient okay. uh, and uh, hope for that the assignment is not too difficult. Okay. That is what I can say, right? Uh, and then what I can also uh, uh, address is that uh, for the lab test, okay, uh, as mentioned, uh, the date has been uh, assigned, okay? uh, but it's not, uh, you need to return on the same day. Okay? So for the lab uh, test, uh, you can take it back, okay? even uh, uh, later when uh, they announce it, okay? uh, Dr. Chang will, uh, Chan, uh, will announce it and uh, basically uh, you can even discuss with your prep. There's no problem uh, with the uh, lab uh, test itself. Okay? And last but not least, I think for the test, uh, the test two, okay, uh, from now, uh, uh, what we already decided is that we still have an online uh, test, okay, so it will be similar to what we have done in test one, okay, All right? So, uh, any question from the floor or from uh, the online guys? Okay, uh, just to update, we only have four students physically right now, okay, uh, the rest of you are either uh, perhaps currently at the Central Plaza, okay, eating something, okay, but so there's some, uh, uh, what do you call it, selling uh, uh, location, something selling over there, one, if, one of it is 14, I do not mistaken, okay, so uh, perhaps you can check out later today, right. Any question before I proceed to the lecture? Uh, for attendance, uh, let I've already tried to log in to uh, okay, now it's okay. So this for lecture attendance, uh, please scan this QR code and you can do that uh, on your own. will be the link right uh, or you can now you can actually uh, scan the QR code okay so that you're able to uh, sign in for this lecture okay so this will be the QR code Okay, so uh, jump. I want to jump in into uh, the transport layer. Yeah? So it's lecture eleven, eh? uh, and I'll need to go back for lecture ten uh, later or next week. Okay, uh, so uh, for this chapter, uh, basically we would like to uh, look into the uh, transport layer. Yeah? Okay, so with transport layer, uh, here we can see that uh, there are some 
quality services. Okay. Uh, also, you can see that uh, we will need to identify either your uh, connection is connection oriented or connectionless. Okay. Uh, we will expect to either connectionless or connection oriented. Uh, basically, in transport layer, we have two uh, very main uh, protocol. What one is called UDP, the other one is called TCP. Okay, so uh, the one with TCP, I think you already uh, come across before. Where when we teach about the layering model, it can be either OSI seven layer models, or perhaps you can use the four or five layer model of your TCP slash IP. Okay, so. We have seen the IP uh, on the uh, on the uh, network layer, okay. And now we want to touch a bit. Uh, what does it mean by TCP? Okay. So TCP is basically what we call a connection oriented uh, kind of uh, protocol. Okay. What does it mean by connection oriented? It means that it's a uh, reliable. If you have any error uh, receiving the uh, information, then you need to retransmit or by uh, by saying that, we can say that uh, any information that you receive, it should be guaranteed uh, without any error. Okay? Whereas, as compared to TCP, welcome. Okay? Uh, we will have what we call UDP. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, what they call it uh, uh, non-connected uh, or connectionless. Okay? Uh, by uh, the mean of this connectionless, it means that uh, you are uh sending information but basically you don't care either the receiver reach uh, receive it or not or perhaps either it reach the receiver with error or not okay so that is the two characteristics and with respect to that we will see why do we need this uh, tcp why do we need this udp why don't you use everything tcp okay so uh, we will dig in depth about this okay? uh, and by the end of this session, perhaps you can really distinguish between UDP and TCP itself, right? Okay, so this is the outline. You will see the transport layer services, process to process delivery. Uh, what does it mean by connection oriented and uh, connectionless service? Okay? Uh, user data gram protocol, UDP, uh, shortly known as UDP, or the transmission control protocol, shortly known as TCP. A stream control transmission protocol, SCTP. Okay, so what are these things that we need to identify? And everything here is basically on the transport layer, right? So the concept of transport layer is basically uh, it needs to process end to end, okay? What does it mean by end to end? It means that the sender uh, will start the process and the receiver will end the process. Okay? Uh, in between, we don't care. Okay? So uh, in between, you have to see on the uh, the network layer okay? because the, on the transport layer, basically, we wanted to make sure that uh, between uh, sender and receiver, it arrived properly. Okay? So um, Transport layer is located between the network layer and the application layer. So on top from the application layer, uh, information will be uh, going down to the net, uh, transport layer and then uh, goes down to the network layer. Okay? So the transport layer, what is the responsibility? Providing service to the application layer. Okay? So uh, when you have this uh, connection uh, or when you want to communicate between two devices, okay? We already know what is the port, uh, what is the uh, MAC address. You already know what is the IP address. Okay? Uh, here, uh, the address that we will actually see is what we call the port addressing. Okay, so uh, basically, if you have a house, okay, you have the address uh, of your house. Then you have a door, right? Then a door. Perhaps you need to enter the house, and you have multiple uh, rooms. Okay. So then you need to enter the different room. Okay, so that can be uh, a kind of uh, uh, imagination that you can uh, see when you have this I the, the uh, Mac layer. Okay, so you know the address uh, of your home, and then you know what is the IP address itself, which is the physical home. Okay, not just the address. Okay, and then when you enter the home, you have uh, multiple uh, rooms. Okay, and you have wish to enter. That is basically what we can. Uh, imagine as uh, a port uh, addressing. Okay. So uh, it receives service from the network layer okay. uh, and it also uh, sent from the uh, 
uh, network layer. Okay, so uh, the domain uh, here we can see that you can have any uh, processes, okay, but uh, the interest will be a uh, domain of the network layer, domain of the transport layer. So basically, uh, for the network layer, uh, it's between uh, the devices. Okay, uh, it's based on uh, what you call hop by hop, whereas for the network layer, uh, it's actually based on the end-to-end uh, uh, -end services. Okay? So these are the difference between those two. Okay? And this uh, shows you the different types of protocol uh, that you can see on the different uh, layering. Okay? So out of this, you can see that uh, for the transport layer, you have the uh, TCP and UDP and also SCTP. Okay. And on the network layer, you can see that you have this IP uh, and also some other uh, protocol that supporting the IP like ITMP, ICMP, DRT, RDRP, and so forth. Okay. And uh, on application layer, which we already seen, okay, and for those who already have a session lab with me, we already seen how does this SMTP being uh, configured in uh, our packet tracer, uh, we also have seen the DNS uh, and SMTP, uh, SMTP and DNS, okay? uh, also DHCP. Okay? So these are uh, the applic services, right? Uh, so this is uh, how you can imagine, or perhaps in uh, uh, during uh, tests or during any uh, assessment, perhaps they will say that give example of app, uh, of protocols that relies on uh, transport layer. Okay? So you can answer is TCP and UDP. Okay. So what does uh, process to process delivery mean? Okay. So the transport layer is responsible for process to process de delivery, uh, where the delivery of a packet part or the message from one process to another, and the two process communicate uh, in a client server relationship. Okay. So we don't care about uh, how many hops or how many devices, uh, for instance, switches or routers that they need to go or pass through. Okay. We just means that we just uh, focus on the end-to-end -end communication itself. Okay. Okay, so this is how it looks like when you see that uh, the node uh, is the one that uh, processing one by one. So it, this node basically can be switched, router, hubs, or whatsoever. Okay. Uh, for the network layer, okay, it will be processing from hub to hub. Okay. Whereas for the uh, transport layer, okay, it will be processed end to end. Okay, so node to node, data layer, host to host, okay, so host to host, okay, is the network layer, and the transport layer is process to process. Okay, so this is the process, okay, whereas for the network layer, it's between host and host. Okay, so here, basically, it means that. Okay, so here it basically it means that uh, all right uh it's okay uh so what you can see is that I lost the mouse. Okay. Can you catch me? <laughs> Help me to catch the mouse. Okay. Uh, but basically, what uh, we can see is that uh, uh, basically here it says that between process to process is on uh, the transport layer between host, okay, host to host, okay, is the network layer, and between node to node is the data link layer. Okay. So that is where you can say that the focus. Uh, for the different layer uh, lies uh, there. Okay. And uh, for addressing, as mentioned, uh, you need to have a 16 bit addresses uh, where uh, it's from 0 to 65, uh, 535. Okay. And this is what we call port number. Okay. So the process right now uh, on the uh, transport layer basically 
uh, the one that we need to address is the port itself. Okay. So at the transport layer, we use a transport layer address for the port number to choose among multiple process running in the destination host. Okay. So if you can remember uh, on the application layer, uh, perhaps uh, for FTP, for instance, you have two different uh, ports that we use, one to send and one, uh, one to, uh, for the communication between uh, the two uh, uh, FTP server or client, and the other one is for the actual data, which is uh, port 21 and port 20. Okay? Uh, then for uh, HTTP, basically you use port 80, okay? and uh, you have some other ports that you can use. Okay? So, uh, later we'll show you some typical ports that are being used okay, uh, or being uh, preserved uh, by the uh, INA. Okay. Uh, and the user, uh, the universal port number called well known port number are used for servers. Okay. So uh, on the next slide, what you can see is that uh, they will use two different ports. Okay. So one is for uh, the uh, for port number 52,000 and the other one is the port number 13, okay? So here, the port number that we identified or the room that you have in your house is uh, room number 52,000, okay? So with respect to that, you can see that the information over here uh, from destination port to the uh, receiving port, okay? So uh, the center port is 52, and the uh, receiving port is 13. Okay? And uh, it replies that it used the 13 uh, sender port okay? because uh, basically, as mentioned, uh, for servers, they already allocate some uh, common types of port. Okay? And then, uh, other than that, you can use any ports that uh, they, uh, they want to do. Okay? So now you can see that uh, from the server, uh, it's from destination port 13 to 52,000. And if you dig uh, in details, okay, uh, going from the application layer okay, uh, to the transport layer to the uh, network layer, okay, so you can see that the application layer uh, it needs to pass to port uh, number 30. So the process is actually this uh, specific application with the port 30. Okay? And for your uh, network layer, basically, uh, you will need to have the IP address that have all this information about the transport layer. Okay, so uh, the data program information will be inserted into your network uh, layer uh, segment. Okay, and uh, it, can, it needs to be passed to the upper layer uh, for further processing. Okay, so uh, so I can uh, not I not Internet Corporation of Assigned Names and Number uh, has divided the ports into three range. Okay, so we have what we call the well-known uh, port numbers, then a registered one, and which uh, the third one dynamic or private. Okay, so the range is 0 to 1023, uh, this one from 1024 to 49150, and then the rest can be also uh, available, but based on the dynamic uh, request or for use uh, of private uh, communication. And the combination between the port numbers uh, and IP address. Okay? So this is what we call socket uh, uh, addressing. Okay? Uh, or you can uh, say that this is a socket programming sometimes. Okay? Uh, for programmers, they call it socket programming. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, it's uh, matching between the IP address and the port. Okay? So the IP address means that the device itself okay? uh, where is the location of the device, okay? and then you have the port which identify the service that you need to uh, acquire. Okay? So process to process delivery needs to identify here, which is the IP address and the port number, and uh, this combination is what we call socket address. Okay? So uh, later on, perhaps when you are becoming the uh, the programmer, okay? so what you need to have is that this to and perhaps uh, they call you uh, the socket programmer. Okay. Okay, so uh, in any of the information okay, uh, from the application layer is being uh, inserted as a payload, okay, then you have the data, and then you transfer to the logical channel. So you can have the physical channel, but logical channel means that 
uh, between the transport layer, it can recognize because it's a service to service uh, uh, protocol. Okay, so uh, it has what we call a logical channel. Okay, so meaning uh, how do you explain or how do you uh, refer this? Okay, so basically, if you have a parcel, okay, you guys uh, always got uh, on Shopee. Okay, so when you request, uh, so uh, what you request is actually uh, to that uh, Shopee service provider. Okay, so when it transport, basically it will go through the uh, lower layer. Okay, then you have the physical transport, and then you uh, can go uh, uh, or you receive it. Okay, and then you can communicate with the seller, right? So this is where you communicate with the seller. Hey, my uh, my packet or my delivery uh, parcel doesn't receive properly. Okay, so can I refund? Okay, so uh, this morning before uh, or during my uh, driving. I watched uh, a single, uh, one TikTok, okay? uh, do you know that, uh, Dato Vida? Okay? So some of you perhaps uh, know Dato Vida, uh, she's one of the uh, entrepreneur, okay? a successful entrepreneur. Okay? Uh, and uh, she uh, really angry because uh, she received a lot of uh, this written parcel, okay? but basically in the parcel itself is trash. Okay? So, he, uh, she actually delivered uh, her product to the customer, but she received a lot of return uh, parcel. But basically, inside the parcel itself, uh, nothing valuable. It's just uh, mineral water and some cupboards. Okay? So uh, that is where you can communicate with the seller. Okay? Seller can communicate between the seller and the uh, buyer. Okay? Uh, so now he said that uh, she said that okay, I know the address. Let me do something to this uh, uh, user. Okay, so this is where you communicate. So you don't blame the transporter lah, okay, uh, whatsoever. Okay, but unless uh, this client denies it, perhaps there's something wrong with the transport file. Okay, so you have to dig uh, into the lower layer. Okay, so and then we have this what we call flow control and error control on the. Uh, transport layer also because we want to make sure that uh, you have the delivery uh, being uh, properly especially for your TCP connection uh, on the uh, where we go to the detailing layer okay, we also have this error control but it's based on uh, the process between host to host okay? this is between end to end okay? so you have this flow control uh, but uh, as we already seen in uh, SMTP, right? We have what we call push protocol and pull protocol. So basically, for the flow control, also uh, when you have this producer and consumer, when you deliver from the producer to consumer, this is what we call push uh, protocol or uh, push uh, service. Okay, and then the flow control will feed back uh, uh, to you, okay, uh, based on what whatever that we receive. Okay, uh, and whereas for the pulling. Uh, the customer basically will need to request and the producer will deliver. The same concept, okay? except this just to show you how the flow control uh, with respect to the, uh, this technique. Okay, so, um, so basically, okay, uh, when you push your message okay, uh, from the application okay, uh, to your server or perhaps to your transport layer, Okay, this is a push message. Push message. Okay, so you will need to have a flow control over here, and then uh, when you push again uh, from the sender to the receiver, okay, so you need to have a feedback of your flow control. Okay, before you push it uh, to the application layer itself, right? So you need to make sure that uh, this flow control, which basically we have uh, uh, identified in the data layer, uh, basically we don't want to overwhelm. Uh, Okay, so the flow control, uh, it means that the receiver is not welcoming too many packets. Okay, so that is basically what is flow control. By saying that stop or perhaps delay a bit of your delivery, so that is where uh, you can address this flow control or you can understand how flow controls work. Okay. Uh, and then we have separate uh, between flow and error control. Okay, so for the error control, because uh, at when it received, we know that, uh, uh, or we can check either it's uh, okay or not. So, you for your error control, you have just one flow. Uh, you receive the packet and then you feedback the sender either it's okay or not. Okay. 
Right. Then coming to the connection and connection, connection oriented and connectionless. Okay. So the idea here is that either uh, you wanted to have a very simple uh, type of transmission or you want to have not complicated but what we call reliable. Okay. A simple one when you need to update for, for instance, ARP, right? When you want to, to, to update uh, any of your uh, uh, network or any of your user within your same network, then you just push it. Okay? Basically, broadcast uh, messages is uh, using UDP lah, okay? because it's unreliable. What does it mean by unreliable? Again, I would say that uh, when you have uh, any uh, information that you, you want to send, you just send it without having any acknowledgement, any connection beforehand or uh, you don't really care either it received by the receiver or even you don't really care either if you receive it's either is received with error or not. Okay, So that is up to the receiver to either update or to uh, make sure that uh, it's a reliable thing or not. Okay? But basically it's knows, uh, it already knows that this is a UDP packet so it's a unreliable protocol. Okay? So that one we can say that is a connectionless okay? without any connection oriented. Okay? Whereas we have what we call uh, connection oriented, basically when you transmit your email uh, uh, service, right? So you want to make sure that the email that you send uh, is being received properly by the receiver or else you can say that uh, it will, uh, the information will be misinterpreted. Uh, Okay. or perhaps the information is uh, is error with an error, right? So we need to have this connection oriented. So basically with this connection oriented, you can see that later on they have three different level, which is the first that you need to do uh, your connection setting. Okay, uh, means that uh, you have to communicate with the set, uh, receiver first okay? uh, by saying that, hey, I wanted to send a, a, a packet or several packets to you. Are you ready to receive it? Okay, the receiver will actually reply. Then the actual transmission will happen. Okay, and to uh, to and fro, and later on you have to disconnect the connection. Okay, so this is what we call connection oriented. Okay, so uh, for connection oriented, we have uh, the TCP, whereas for the connectionless, we are using the UDP. Okay. So these are a few uh, well-known ports. Okay? Uh, so you can see that uh, you have the FTP, right? Using the port 20 and port 21. Okay? You have the DHTP using port 67. HTTP using port 80. Okay? Uh, data using port 30. Okay? And the rest you can see mentioned over here. Okay? Uh, then uh, in depth about UDP itself, right? So the user data grant protocol is called a connection less and unreliable transport protocol. Okay, so these two uh, definition uh, combined together is a connection less. It means that they, you don't need to have a prior connection before you uh, communicate or transfer data yeah, with the receiver. Okay, uh, and with this is really unreliable. Okay, so it does not. Add any uh, add anything to the service of IP except to provide process to process communication instead of post to post communication. Okay, so it doesn't give you any advantage uh, in sending. Uh, it's just uh, want to have this uh, data be transferred between sender and receiver. Okay, so with respect to that, is uh, considered as the simplest protocol uh, between uh, uh, if you compare to TCP. Okay, so. Uh, it's very simple and use a minimum of weight. Okay? So that would be advantage of uh, your UDP, right? So in UDP, uh, you will need to have uh, this uh, uh, header okay? uh, and data. So data came from the application layer that you need to have, uh, have this header. So what is uh, within the header itself? You need to have the 16 bit uh, source of port number. Okay? You have the source. You have the destination, uh, you have the total length, uh, means that what will be the size of the uh, whole the UDP size, okay? and then the checksum of CCP. Okay? So perhaps uh, this to check either uh, it received uh, properly or not, okay? uh, without error or not, at least 
uh, by having this checks up. Okay, so you can identify either it has error or not. Okay, perhaps you don't need to do any correction uh, because it's, uh, if you receive it with uh, error, just discard uh, the information. Okay, so this is how uh, the header, okay, very simple header uh, information that you do to, you need to include in your UDP, right? Uh, and the maximum that it can go is uh, up to 65, 535 bytes, okay? Uh, but uh, for the data itself, okay, you need to minus up by the 8 bytes, okay? So how does this represent? You can see that you have the 16 bytes uh, uh, or 16 bits over here, okay, for your source number, because it's 0 to 16, okay? So this is on the first row, then destination port number, 16 to 31, okay? And then on the second row, you have uh, 32 up to uh, the next uh, plus uh, another 16. So you have the total length and the checksum uh, there. Okay? So uh, the first to fill in the header, define the source and destination port numbers, right? And the third field okay, is, the, uh, is the header define the total length of the user data, header plus data. Okay? So uh, the maximum it can go is 65, 535. Okay? Uh, so if uh, they ask uh, a bit of question that relates to UDP, uh, if say that given that uh, 65 uh, maximum of data that you need uh, to transfer is 65535, can you transmit it uh, on a single packet? Uh, the answer would be no lah, because you have to find this out by another 8 bytes okay, uh, for the video, right? So, uh, however, the total length needs to be less. Okay? So the total length of your data should be less than uh, the size of your UDP uh, data graph, okay? And the last field is the header that carry the optional text up, okay? So sometimes, uh, if you wanted to put it uh, as an uh, error checking, okay? So you can uh, put it as an option, okay? So mind you, that this is unreliable, so if you receive with error or if the server uh, doesn't need to have this data, they can just discard it. Okay, so this example, okay, uh, basically if you look into uh, uh, details uh, of your uh, information that you uh, uh, send in, okay, uh, so this is in hexadecimal, okay, so uh, with this, okay, so what is the source port number in decimal, okay, what is the destination port number in decimal, what is the total length, what is the length, uh, what is the packet direct from client to server vice versa, uh, so we need to identify what is the client process. Okay? So uh, by uh, having this information, okay, uh, by looking at uh, if you uh, do some investigation on uh, the uh, UDP. Okay? So basically, the first four digits, okay, uh, which is in the hexadecimal, okay, is equal to 52100. Okay? So meaning that uh, this is the uh, source port number. Okay, so it's 52,100. Okay. And the destination is 000D, so it's 13 in uh, decimal. Okay. And the third, uh, fourth hexadecimal, okay, uh, defines the length of the full UDP packet, okay, it's uh, 28 bytes. Okay. And the length of data is uh, need to be minus out by 8, so you have 20 bytes uh, of the length of the data. And uh, since the destination port number is 13, meaning that this is from the server, uh, from uh, the client to the server. Okay? So the destination is uh, port 13. Okay? So you know that this is from client to the server. Uh, and the client process is the data. Okay? So you have to refer to your table. Okay? So I don't think you can remember this, okay? uh, but uh, if it's given in a table manner, so you can identify it. Okay? So here, it seems, it seems that they are using uh, port uh, 52100 uh, okay, uh, to get uh, uh, the client uh, processing okay, and port 13 uh, to be used uh, as the server port itself. Um, going on, uh, UDP is useful for a process that requires simple request response communication with no concern for flow and error control. Okay, so Simplest uh, transmission uh, is not, it doesn't want to be uh, complicated. So these are the things that 
uh, you can uh, address with UDP uh, is uh, useful for process with internal flow and error control mechanism. Okay. Uh, UDP is a suitable transport protocol for multicasting. Okay. It's also useful for management such as N SNMP, okay, which is the uh, background signaling messages. Okay. And you can also use this for routing information protocol where it exchange uh, the routing information uh, on the background process. Okay. So that usually use UDP. Okay, so um, the few slides over here will give you some indication uh, either uh, which is much more proper uh, to use UDP or TCP. Okay? So say that the client server application such, such as DNS uh, uses this service okay? uh, because the client needs to send a short request to the server and receive quick response for it. Okay? So uh, this one can be a, a, a Correct fit. Okay? Oh, so uh, the request and response can each fit in the user data grid. Uh, since only one message is exchanged in uh, each direction, the connection of features is not an issue. Okay? And the client server does not worry the message are delivered out of order. Okay? So uh, basically, because you just need a very small messages to be uh, transferred quickly, okay? and it can fit within one uh, data grab, okay? because in data grab, it doesn't have sequence. A number, okay. You cannot uh, put your packet or information from the upper layer to multiple UDP, okay. So that is what it, what, what it says that it can fit into one user datagram, okay. So it cannot have a uh, sequence number uh, to indicate uh, this is a, a consequence number of packet uh, that you want to transfer, okay. So with that, uh, it's okay, okay. So that you can use the UDP protocol, okay. Whereas a client server application such as SMTP, which your email uh, protocol, okay, uh, cannot use the service of UDP because the uh, user can send a long email message okay, because it cannot fit into the long messages, okay, uh, which include multimedia. Okay, so the application uses UDP and the message does not fit in one single data and the message might be split by the application into different uh, user datagram. So here, uh, we can say that connection service uh, will will create problem or it's not suitable. Okay, and the user telegram may arrive be delivered to the uh, to the server application of our order if you uh, have multiple packets to be sent on, uh, for that service. Okay? and the receiver application may not be able to deorder the message because it doesn't have this sequence numbering. Okay? so this is not uh, really suitable uh, for us to use uh, UDP transport this SMTP, okay? Then, uh, assume we are downloading a very large text from the internet, okay? Uh, we definitely need to use a transport layer that provides reliable services, okay? Because when you download uh, your uh, text file, okay? So it needs to be reliable, okay? And it needs to be perhaps uh, pushed into multiple uh, datagram, okay? So UDP won't be suitable to transmit this. Okay? So we won't, uh, we don't want part of the part to be missing or corrupted. Okay? Uh, delay created between the, the delivery of the part is not the, uh, it's not our concern. Okay? So again, UDP is not suitable for this kind of uh, service. So with respect to that, we need to deliver it using a TCP connection. Any questions so far? You can turn on your uh, voice activation uh, in your uh, Google Meet, okay? And you can ask questions if you have any. Okay. Right. Uh, if there's no question. Uh, perhaps we can uh, continue okay, on the TCP type of connection. Okay. So when we want to have a reliable type of uh, communication, so we have to turn our site to uh, uh, transmission control protocol, uh, which is shortened by uh, shortly known uh, as TCP. Okay. So with TCP, uh, it's a connection oriented and a reliable protocol. Okay. Uh, so it needs to go to this process where uh, like when you have uh, previously when you have your call uh, phone okay, uh, where you need to dial basically 
uh, at the beginning of uh, telecommunication services. Okay, so you need to dial a number. So basically, that is where we kind of uh, have a, a connection uh, request and uh, uh, you start to connect between end to end before you can start uh, uh, talking between the two end uh, telephone uh, line, right? Okay, so same thing, uh, but instead of a physical uh, connection, perhaps this is on what we call a virtual uh, end to end communication. Okay, so uh, it defines the connection at that establishment before you start to transfer. Okay, then you have to go to the next process, which is the data transfer once you already have communication established. And at the end, you have to actually release uh, the, uh, uh, or the, the link itself. Okay, so which this uh, can be defined as the connection oriented space. Okay? So uh, TCP uses the combination of GBN and SR. What is GBN one and what is SR? To my physical uh, students, what is SR? Okay, it's not Shah Rukh Khan. No, 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 no. Uh, how about GBN, Guru Besar uh, Nakal? What is SR and what is GBN? <laughs> SR basically not Sharuhan. SR is selective repeat, right? Uh, and GBN is not Guru Besar Nakal. GBR, uh, GBN, not Guru Besar Nakal. Uh, but it's actually go back end. Okay? So where uh, you have your uh, communication where you when you send okay, using this uh, window sliding protocol, Okay, and uh, the receiver has a buffer. The sender also have a buffer. Receiver have the buffer, so you can send multiple packet uh, before you acknowledge it uh, on the multiple uh, sequence. Okay, uh, it can be either selective repeat means that if your uh, if there's any error on that specific packet, only that packet that needs to be uh, reset. Whereas go back end basically if you have a subsequent packet. Uh, but uh, perhaps the upper uh, sequence packet have uh, error, so you have to uh, actually send everything uh, back. Okay, so you can see that this can be implemented with uh, the uh, sliding windows protocol uh, and go back end uh, or selective repeat. Okay. So what is what are the features of TCP? Okay. Uh, so it will have flow and error control. Uh, it can have this uh, error checking, parity uh, based a checksum or a cyclic redundancy check. Okay, so with respect to this, it's either uh, you just detect error, okay, uh, and retransmit whenever you uh, identify error, or perhaps you can identify where's the error, and perhaps you can uh, 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 correct it at the receiver side. Uh, and TCP uses sequencing to handle duplicates uh, and out of order delivery. Okay? Uh, so with this uh, TCP, uh, you need to have some buffer at the center side. So meaning that on the application layer, when you uh, when when you process or when you uh, have already uh, have any data to be sent, okay? so you need to put it into buffer because the transport layer perhaps it needs to have some time before it can process to the lower layer. Okay, so you need to have a buffer. Also the receiver, okay, uh, perhaps you need to uh, uh, take some time when you receive or perhaps uh, since it's received with out of order, so you have to uh, make it in sequence before you uh, send it to the upper layer. Okay? So uh, you can have the sequencing to handle duplicates or out of order deliveries. Uh, you can see that uh, it uses retransmission to handle lost packet, okay? uh, and it cannot have any lost packet, lah, okay? So because this is reliable, just imagine that uh, you you have to send your uh, answer to your uh, test one, okay? And suddenly uh, you need to send eight uh, pages, then suddenly uh, pages number six lost, okay? So uh, your marks will be taken off from uh, the total mark. Okay, so that is considered unreliable. Okay. Uh, so retransmission to handle the lost packet uh, uses uh, some techniques to block, uh, avoid replay. Okay. Uh, use flow control to prevent prevent data overrun and use technique to avoid congestion. Okay. So the flow control uh, basically uh, need to be used okay, so to avoid 
uh, any uh, uh, too much packet to be sent okay, or to avoid congestion, to avoid congestion. Okay. So, uh, so any uh, process need to be uh, inserted to TCP, and uh, you can actually have a virtual connection between sender to the receiver. Okay. And uh, it's not just uh, that uh, in the TCP or the transport layer, uh, we need to have this buffer. Okay? So a buffer is just like a temporary storage. Uh, I'm not sure either you have come across like uh, the term like FIFO okay? uh, or LIPO. Okay? Uh, li not LIPO such as. <laughs> uh, FIFO basically is first in, first out. So meaning that whenever you have a buffer, okay, so anything that comes in first will be actually uh, executed first, okay. Uh, uh, for perhaps uh, LIPO, okay, uh, is last in, uh, first out, okay. Uh, or you can have kind of a priority where you process the highest priority packet compared to the lowest priority packet, okay. But basically you need to have buffer on both sides, the sender and the receiver, and again, uh, if you go back uh, and see uh, the implementation of video sliding protocol with respect to uh, go back end and also selectivity repeat. Okay, so basically uh, this will represent uh, what would be the size of your videos. Uh, okay, so of your sliding protocol. Okay, uh, the blue one send, the green one means that uh, it's already received but not uh, sent yet to the uh, receiver. Okay, and then the receiver will have also a buffer. Uh, that holds uh, out of sequence packet, or perhaps you have multiple order packet. Okay, so uh, that needs to be uh, done at the receiving end. Okay, and uh, again, as mentioned, uh, need, uh, if you have a lot of data uh, which is uh, bigger than the size of the TCP packet itself, so what it needs to do is that it has to be segmented into different numbers of packets. Okay? So you need to have a sequence number. Okay, so later, uh, in the header of your uh, TCP, you will see that you will have some information of the sequence number uh, and also uh, uh, acknowledgement number. Okay, so these two will be uh, added to your TCP uh, in this example, right? So the bytes of data being transferred is uh, in each connection are numbered by the TCP. And the number start with a random generated number. Number, okay. So um, this is for the sequence, okay. So that if you start with a sequence of one, then uh, your the rest of your packet uh, that has been uh, separated into several TCP uh, packet, okay, uh, will be number uh, consequently, right? So here, uh, an example: if you have a connection, uh, a transfer of five of five five thousand bytes. And the first byte is numbered as 10,000 and what? What is the sequence number for each segment? If uh, you have to send uh, five segments, each carry 1,000 bytes. This one is just saying that uh, for the size of your TCP is uh, 1,000 bytes, okay? assuming that, uh, and you need to deliver 5,000 bytes. So basically, uh, if you divide five by 1,000, it means that you need to have five segments of packet. Uh, uh, and the sequence number, we will start from 10,001, which is the first sequence, uh, sequence number. Uh, then the next one uh, is being increased by 1,000, so it's 11,001, okay? and then uh, so forth. Okay? So this will be uh, the sequence number that you need to add uh, to the header of your TCP. Okay, so later also we'll see that uh, the value of the sequence uh, field number uh, is actually the number of the first byte, eh? first data byte contains in the segment. Okay, so uh, uh, that is the first sequence. Okay, so that is the sequence, the first sequence number of your uh, data byte. Okay, whereas uh, you need to also see that there's an acknowledgement because in the header uh, you will have both information. Uh, your sequence number and acknowledgement. And the acknowledgement here uh, is expected to be whatever the number expected to be sent uh, on the next transmission. Okay, so the value that I have the acknowledgement field is a segment defined of the number of the next byte. Okay, so it's next byte a party expect to receive. Okay, so this uh, acknowledge the, what 
it expect uh, on the next sequence. Okay, and the arrangement number is uh, cumulative. What it means that cumulative is that uh, if you have uh, this sequence, okay, so if uh, if you have uh, or you expect to send uh, the next one would be fifteen thousand. So your arrangement is actually fifteen. You don't have to acknowledge each and every of this. Okay. Okay, so this is the header. Okay, uh, just now you have only 20 bytes for your uh, UDP, but for TCP it can go up to 60 bytes. Okay? Uh, and uh, same thing that you need to have, you have to have the source port number, okay, address or the destination port address. Okay, and then you have the checksum and also you have uh, in TCP just now you have uh, and also uh, the total length, eh? okay. So, whereas for your UDP, uh, DCP right now, you have more information uh, other than the source port number, the destination, uh, then uh, the checksum, and uh, perhaps the window size. Okay? You also need to identify what is the sequence number and what is the acknowledgement number, meaning that uh, on a single uh, DCP connection, you can have both uh, sequence number and acknowledgement number, right? So we'll see later on that uh, it can go from sender to receiver or receiver to sender. Okay. Then you have other also information also. Okay. Uh, then the window size that mentioned uh, if you are using the uh, uh, SR or GPN. Okay. Then you can have also some other option and padding uh, for further uh, purposes. Okay. And then uh, in between there, Okay, these small things, uh, you will also have some um, some flag, okay? uh, for instance, urgent pointer, okay? uh, you can have acknowledgement, okay? request for push, reset for connection, synchronize secure number, and also terminate the uh, connection. Okay? So these are some other control field or flag that you can also uh, uh, activate uh, later on. Okay? And also, you can uh, have uh, additional uh, uh, what they call it cross check. Okay? Not just by, by the source number, but you can also add the port uh, IP address to your TCP header. Okay? So uh, this is where you can have uh, additional uh, header information. Okay? Basically, because you have this uh, uh, data, uh, of data uh, what they call it, uh, header additional uh, portion. Okay? So you can actually include this. Okay, so with respect to this, you have the uh, IP address of the, uh, the source destination and uh, some information that relates to uh, other things that we need to know. Huh? Okay, so uh, with TCP, we have already identified it's a connection oriented. Okay? Uh, it needs to establish a virtual path between source and destination. Why does it mean, uh, why does it mention about virtual path? Uh, physically, you have this connection between all the devices in a, uh, uh, in a, in a computer network or internet, right? Uh, you have connection or as a physical uh, one, but between uh, the sender and the receiver, you need to have what we call a virtual connection, which is uh, actually have been connected uh, uh, physically, but you need to identify sender to receiver virtually. Okay? Uh, and all the segments belong to the message uh, are then sent over this virtual path. Okay? Uh, and you need to have these three uh, level, which is the uh, connection at the establishment, uh, data transfer, and then terminate the connection itself. Okay? So similar to your uh, previous phone call, or current also can be uh, uh, seen, where uh, when you uh, actually wanted to call your friend, okay, uh, basically you have to dial the number and wait until your friend uh, pick up. Okay? So that is where you can imagine as a connection establishment. Okay? And then when you talk, this is where you actually do the data transfer. Okay? And then uh, with, when your friend uh, already uh, or haven't finished talk and you are angry at her or, or him, so basically you can just terminate it. Okay, so that is where uh, you can imagine that you have this uh, connection termination. Okay. Uh, okay. Another uh, concept that you can see that uh, it is a full duplex point. Okay. Uh, 
uh, coming back to what we define a full duplex, a full duplex means that you can have both communication on the same time, right? Okay. So, uh, so this connection establishment in TCP are called three-way handshaking. Okay, and with respect to that, you can have uh, vice versa, similar to your uh, phone call. Okay, just now before you uh, terminate your call because you are fighting with your girlfriend or boyfriend. Okay, uh, before that. Uh, you can exchange uh, the combination, okay? uh, not just like walk turkey, only one person can talk. Both are fighting, so both are exchanging uh, uh, verbally. Okay? So you can hear and uh, your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend is uh, angry at you, but at the same time, you also curse her or him. Okay? So uh, basically, uh, is uh, you can imagine that this is how a full loop acts. Okay? So you can actually transfer your your voice okay and in the same time you can receive uh, the voice from the other side okay and after the connection is established okay by the rational data can be uh, transferred okay? so that is what i mentioned and any two parties involved in exchange client or server can be closed uh, can close the connection also it's usually initiated by the client okay so now auto your uh, your boyfriend call you but as a girlfriend, you should, you receive the call and you are fed up with your boyfriend, so you can terminate the call, although he is the one that starts the communication, right? Okay, uh, so this is an example of a sequence, okay? Uh, so you will see that uh, you have uh, this both sequence and acknowledgement, okay? And also the flag, you can see that uh, you what you expect lah. Okay, so this one, uh, you are trying to uh, get a connection, okay? and then uh, you will send a sequence of 8,000, meaning that uh, you are sending a packet with a sequence starting with 8,000, okay? and uh, the receiver will reply by having said that it requested uh, uh, the next packet to be 8,001. And in the same um, uh, transmission, okay? Uh, the sender, uh, this sender, okay, uh, will actually request for or uh, trying to send uh, five uh, fifteen thousand, okay, uh, and then uh, when the receive uh, this uh, end user receive, it will acknowledge with fifteen thousand for what, and then also uh, the sequence of the packet that uh begins to be sent is eight thousand and one, okay. So you see that uh, when you have the acknowledgement, that's okay. When you have this acknowledgement flag, okay, uh, this one you only have the sync flag, uh, sending. Uh, this one you have both acknowledgement and sending, and this one you need to just have acknowledgement. Okay. Uh, same thing over here. Okay, uh, this is when you have the data transfer. Okay, uh, push flag means that you need to send data. Okay, so your data will have uh, a sequence between eight thousand one until nine thousand, for instance, over here. And then uh, it will be uh, uh, it said then nine thousand one. Okay, and you said nine thousand one to ten thousand. Okay, and uh, the acknowledgement is where uh, you already received this and you already received this. Okay, so you you need to acknowledge that uh, the next one is uh, ten thousand and one. Okay, and so forth. Okay. Okay, so same thing okay, uh, where you need to have your sequence and enrichment. Right? Uh, and last but not least, okay, uh, for the flow control, uh, the flow control balance the rate of producer creates data from the rate uh, a consumer can use the data. Okay? Uh, and TCP create a separate flow control from error control. Okay? So that is already been mentioned. So uh, again, this is replicating the previous uh, diagram. Okay? So when you have a message that you want to send to the receiver, okay, so you have a push message, okay, but uh, at the uh, within the uh, layer itself, okay, uh, you have to have a flow control. Okay? And then when you push to the receiving end, so you have a flow control between the end to end okay, before you can send it to the upper layer. So uh, since TCP is a, a reliable transport uh, layer protocol, okay, uh, so it should have uh, some indication of error. Okay, 
and this means that the application program that deliver the stream of data to TCP relies on TCP to deliver the entire stream to the application program. On the other end of uh, in order without error and without any part loss of the data. Okay, so uh, the term uh, without an error it means that uh, you receive it uh, authentically or uh, authentically uh, and you can say that uh, it's correct. Then, uh, other than uh, TCP and UDP, uh, you can also have this SCTP uh, for Stream Control Transmission Protocol. Uh, basically, it's to support other uh, services okay, rather than UDP and TCP, especially when uh, right now we need to have a very good streaming protocol. Okay? So, that is where you have this SCTP. Okay? So, with this... Uh, SCTP basically uh, you can have multiple uh, virtual connection. Okay? Uh, so here represent that you can have multiple uh, stream link okay? uh, between uh, the processes. Okay? Uh, and you can uh, have this kind of concept where you can also transfer it using different IP. Okay? Uh, this IP means that this is the, um, the provider uh, ISP. Okay, internet service provider. Okay, you can uh, from a single client, you can transfer through different uh, ISP so that you, uh, if you have two different uh, subscription ISP, so you can uh, uh, load balance your data okay, between these two, and then uh, you can have a higher data rate compared to just a single link. Uh, so as a summary, we have seen the transport layer services uh, in the sense of TCP, UDP, and SCTP. Okay? Uh, and uh, what we have already seen is that uh, for your uh, transport layer, it's a uh, process to process delivery. Okay? Uh, we define that for TCP, it's actually a connection oriented, whereas for UDP, it's a connectionless. Okay? Uh, so with UDP basically is a simple uh, type of uh, transport layer okay, uh, with a very less data compared to TCP, which actually uh, needs to have uh, more information uh, or header. Okay? And we also see that uh, if you combine between the IP address and also the transport address, uh, that is what we call socket programming or uh, socket uh, address itself. Okay? And then uh, to uh, support current demand state for, for streaming. Okay, so what we need to have is additional uh, protocol. Uh, basically, SCTP is one of it uh, as a, a good example of uh, additional uh, transport layer okay, uh, protocol compared to this. Right. So, uh, I think that would be it uh, for my lecture. Okay. Uh, we've respect to that, I open uh, to any question. Okay? Uh, if you wanted to uh, ask virtual, uh, verbally, uh, you can open your uh, uh, mic and then you can ask questions verbally. Right? Uh, I see Wong Yen Hong already mentioned about Simon. Uh, I think you came late. Uh, at the beginning, I've already addressed that the Simon uh, as mentioned, basically, uh, we have a team of lecturers, okay, uh, and we already uh, uh, segregated our task, okay, uh, which is one of the lecturers uh, is being assigned, uh, and he mentioned that he needed need some uh, time to uh, release it, okay, uh, but uh, I'm currently helping him if he needs any help, okay, so uh, we, uh, we will try to deliver it as soon as possible. as soon as possible. <laughs> so do you have tutorial today at afternoon? Hmm. What do you think? For sure, la, you have. Yeah, uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, there's a delay. Uh, we are sorry about that, uh, but uh, we will try to soon uh, deliver it. Any else? Any other question? from the floor itself. Anything that you want to share to your friend? Come up front over here. Yeah. Yeah, please let us. Hello. Say hi to your friend. Hi. See me. Hello. 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 H
Sini dah. Okay, okay. Is there any message that you want to send? Uh, my message is that where are you? Where are the rest of you? <laughs> where are you guys? Uh, roughly about 300 before it. What link? Oh, you want the attendance link? I already have the QR uh, uh, being uh, sent to you. Okay, you can just scan it. Ada berapa tak tahu sih? Tak faham? So by now you should know the difference between TCP and UDP. Okay, uh, and also when we talk about uh, TCP IP. Okay, so uh, the uh, TCP IP model basically based on the TCP is a reliable connection but also you can deliver it using unreliable okay, uh, which is uh, using UDP. Uh, for assignment as mentioned uh, I cannot say anything at this moment uh, you have to wait for the official announcement. Yes, uh, eager to do assignment right? And for those who need, uh, basically for next week, we have a quiz, okay? So the quiz will cover the lecture uh, that we cover from uh, today until uh, the chapter that uh, not be tested yet. Okay, it seems that everyone is good. Can I have a thumbs up if everyone is good? So I uh, will release you much more idea for today. That's okay for you. So that you can actually uh, be prepared for perhaps your uh, prayer. Okay? Or perhaps you want to go to Central Plaza. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to the Central Plaza, there's a lot of uh, people selling things okay, over there. So if there's no other question or anything else to be highlighted, I think that will be all from me. Okay? Uh, I just wish you all a very uh, good day. And also, uh, I remember uh, in, uh, what do you call it, a film, Terak, kan Terak. Yang apa ni, Jimmy Carey, Jimmy Carey, says that if I don't see you, uh, good afternoon, good night. And good evening. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you for those who have session with me tutorial today. So I'll see you at three. Uh, the rest I'll see you next week. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Salaman.